well, I call it Dang because I'm I'm from the South. But we're gonna hear from Benson. He's gonna introduce a little bit more about the work they're doing with Dang Foods, tasty snacks. Thank you. Hi, everybody out there in Zoom land. My name is Vincent. I'm the founder of Dang Foods. Hopefully, you can see me. Um, by the way, as a B Corp and a minority owned business and a member of both OSC and the Jedi Collaborative, I really do feel like this is my tribe and my community. Um, and I'm honored and privileged to be the first one presenting to you all today. Uh, so, thank you for having me here to tell you a little bit about Dang. Okay, so what is Dang? That's my mom, Dang, over there. Um, she, uh, nine years ago, she gave me a recipe that changed my life. Uh, it was a recipe that called for coconut chips, and it was so good that I started a company and named it after her. Our mission here at Dang is to share our culture for a healthier and more flavorful world. What does that mean? Well, we believe that the Western diet is a little bit too high in processed food, sugar, and in meat consumption. And if you look at the Eastern diet, it tends to be higher in whole foods, lower in sugar, and it tends to be more plant-based. So we think we can bring elements of our Eastern culture over to the U.S. All right, now what is Dang? Uh, so Dang is the first truly Asian American snack brand. We use Asian ingredients and flavors to create delicious, better for you scents. Our brand refresh work that just came out uh, this February, reflects our healthy Asian Americans acquisitioning. And so far the feedback from our fans has been really great. Um, we have our coconut chip line, which you might've seen out there. It's the very first coconut chip out there, still the number one coconut chip in America. We have our Thai rice chips, which are behind me. Um, they're delicious. They're Sophie Winner. Chrissy Teigen tweeted about them. They're pretty much the bomb. And then we have our new Dang Bars. Um, these are keto certified bars with Asian flavors. And they were the number one selling bar at Whole Foods last year. Number one in Uniblasi. So we had a very, very good first year out there. Um, I don't have a lot of time, but I do want to get into a little bit about who our consumer is. So if you look at uh, our competitive set in our category, you'll see that Dang is the number one in terms of millennial index. So we do really, really, really well with the millennial uh, demographic, um, which is notable because a lot of the bigger companies that exist in the world can't really connect with millennials. They don't have that authentic story to tell. Um, they really focus on value and older generations. So we kind of fit nicely into that niche. Uh, we also do really well with Asians, big surprise. Um, we we over-index at 137 index with Asian American fans. And when you think about it, Asians are actually the perfect consumer because they're the fastest growing minority group in the US. They also have high education, high incomes, and they're not being targeted by anybody. We're used to being ignored as a model minority, um, but now we're standing loud, we're standing proud, um, and we're saying, hey, you should speak to us because we actually have a trillion dollars of buying power. All right. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about what COVID has done to our business. And in general, actually, I do want to make a point about um, there has been a rise of anti-Asian racism in the past couple months because of COVID. Um, as part of the Jedi Collaborative, we do denounce this. And uh, it has actually given us a platform to, to speak up more on behalf of Asians and Asian Americans. Um, so I do encourage you, if you want to learn more, check out Jetta Collaborative. We're going to be doing do it. We have a we have a launch event next week um, where we do hope to, to to speak about that. Now on the business, the overall impact of COVID has been varied. So uh, we've seen an increase in sales because all of grocery has been going up, uh, both retailers and e-commerce. But uh, we've also seen some negative impact as well. So. Um, our Whole Foods traffic, our Whole Foods sales has been down. And if you actually look at the traffic to Whole Foods, it's actually down more than 50% right now. Um, so our business has taken a little dip because of that. Um, we've also seen that distributors like UNFI and Kehi are holding less inventory, which has created uh, kind of a cash flow issue where we have a lot of inventory right now. So even though our fundamentals are healthy, because of the uncertainty uh, out there, we have reduced spending and we have reduced payroll to conserve cash. And so we're here today seeking funding to resume normal operations, as we are confident that the trend towards healthy snacking will continue following this crisis. So uh, that's it for me. Thank you all for listening with that. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Jonathan, do you have a question for us? Sure, uh, Vincent, great to see you and huge fan of the chips. I, I put them on my oatmeal in the mornings uh, almost all the time. Um, what do you see as the biggest opportunities kind of in, in the new world and, and how are you planning um, kind of call it six months out, a year out uh, in this new normal that we're living in? 
It's a great question. Um, you know, so many changes right now, but one thing I've really seen is a shift towards e-commerce. Um, our e-commerce business has grown dramatically. Um, we absolutely are expanding our e-commerce business. Um, we're going to go into Amazon in Canada as well, because we think that's a big opportunity for us. Um, we also think there's been a, a lot of opportunity in the club channel for us. We actually haven't touched the club channel. So in terms of white space, we haven't touched really mass channel for club channel, which are two of the biggest channels in the U.S. So uh, e-commerce club and mass is where, is where the future is at for us. Thank you. Kristen, do you have a question, Vincent? Yes, yeah, so thank you so much for this presentation. And um, I, usually being a panelist, you get samples. So um, remember Jonathan and I chomping on samples. So thank you for doing all of this. Without this, we'll just have to imagine um, how lovely everything is and how crunchy everything is. And so um, I just had a question about um, how you're doing now as far as employees and what is actually happening with those employees during this time. Yeah, good question. So unfortunately, we did have to cut some payroll costs. Um, we had to furlough some employees. We also had to let some employees go. Uh, in total, about 40% of our workforce has been impacted. Um, and we're really doing that just to you know, be able to survive through this crisis, um, which is why if we were able to raise some money, uh, we would be able to rehire some of those employees. Okay. So are they furloughed or they're just there off and they need to fend for themselves just as a practical thing? I'm guessing they're going to want to come back to their jobs as soon as you have more money. The hope is yes. Um, we also moved some employees to part time and that in those cases, it's very easy to flex back up to full time. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vincent. Amazing. Thank you both.